Good evening. Well, it's evening here, but I don't know if it's evening with you, because you could be watching this at any time. Um, I'm in a place called Father's Dwelling, which you might see, I've seen on the uh, billing at the end. Uh, and Father's Dwelling, I might add, is, belong, is a little cottage up in the hills owned where my great friend Pete Neville and uh, Jackie live. And he's doing the recording, so that's why um, Father's Dwelling is on, because it, it sounds a bit odd, I think, Father's Dwelling. Anyway, Fred Dibner. Um, after we made those television commercials, the Right Fred, right Set Fred ones, which were a great success but went all wrong in the end because he was drinking the opposition's beer on BBC, etc, etc. Um, as I've mentioned before, we became great friends. And uh, he was obviously interested in steam and, and steam locomotives. So when a, a friend of ours called Alan Hutchins, who had the pub, a posh pub in Cheshire, said, um, I'm going to the Rainhill Trials, I've got VIP tickets for the, the main stand, would you like to come and bring Fred? So uh, I mentioned it to Fred and he said, yeah, I go, I'd love to go to the Rainhill Trials. So we set off one morning in this beautiful old vintage Bentley, well it wasn't a vintage Bentley, it was a classic Bentley of Allen's, a pre-war saloon, all polished with a, a walnut dashboard and beautiful leather seats and we were wafted along the country lanes of Cheshire and uh, when we got near the trials there were queues of traffic miles long and the old Bentley began to boil. So Alan said I think we'd better pull in on that verge and wait for a bit and let the old girl um, cool down a bit. We'll be all right, we've got plenty of time. He said I've got a hamper in the back, do you fancy a glass of champagne? So Fred said yeah. So I said yeah. So we got out, got the hamper out and sat on amongst the dandelions and the grass next to the cows and hedges and consumed what was in this hamper. There were game pie, ham, all sorts of things, boiled eggs, um, and I think we consumed probably two or even three bottles of champagne. So we were well mellowed and, uh, and felt more like a snooze and going to the Rainhill Trials, busting a gut to get there, but Alan was determined that we should get there, even though it was late. So we finally got there, parked the Bentley, went to the VIP stand, and to everybody's disgust, having to get up to let us three drunkards shuffle along the seats to sit down. And we got there just in time for the climax of the show, because the, the, the rocket, the Sans Parai, and novelty, the three locomotives um, who won those trials, or was the final, finalists in the trials, were coming along the track in front of the stand, and the guards band with the red tunics opposite were playing Hail the Conquer Conquering Hero, I think that's what it was, when Fred threw up all over the guy in front of him. I think it was a mare or something. And uh, it was the most embarrassing moment because his wife, with a big hat on, started belting Fred around the head with a programme saying, you drunken hooligans, you've spoilt my husband's day. Fred saying, I didn't mean to do it, love, I didn't mean to do it, love, I'm very sorry. So we beat a hasty retreat, because it was, it really was, it was the most embarrassing thing to have happened. And uh, we then went to the engine sheds and had a look at the engines, we thought we'd be safe there. And this lady turned up, she saw Fred, and obviously recognised him because of television. And she was the great, great, great granddaughter, I've forgotten how many greats, of Timothy Hackworth. Now, Timothy Hackworth was the opposition engineer to um, George Stevenson. I, don't, I forgot whether it was George or Robert Stevenson. And he built the, the engine called Sans Pareil. Thread was absolutely enthralled to meet this real life, flesh and blood relation of his engineering hero, Timothy Hackworth. And... Uh, she believed quite understandably that Sans Parai was the better of the best of the better of all the engines because she said that her great 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 grandfather Timothy Hackworth had uh, he was the original man to have thought of a tube boiler and had mentioned it to the engineers of uh, of uh, the rocket and uh, but they couldn't afford to make such a, a, a boiler so she reckoned that. Um, it was stolen from him. Whether this is true or not, I don't know. I would, I would be inclined to believe her. Anyway, um, we then wandered into the, uh, the refreshment tent so we could have a Guinness to settle his stomach. 
this is Fred, and uh, we met uh, Brian Redhead, who was the BBC man at the time, and who um, sadly died some years ago, uh, who said that he'd heard in the uh, press tent that Fred had had a bit of an altercation in the uh, VIP stand and uh, uh, etc. So Fred was a, absolutely couldn't believe that it was known um, by the BBC man that he'd been sick all over this dignitary and was uh, absolutely really upset when Brian Redhead said he thought it was the mayor, mayor of Bolton. Anyway, we then set off to go home and had to stop at a couple of pubs for another couple of Guinnesses or how many Guinnesses he consumed that night to settle his stomach, but it was a good day out.